This is a video game that does something I've never seen before. It is designed to be played on this MIDI controller, and I find the idea of this really fascinating. The player has a gun, but it is not loaded at the moment, so let's reload the gun. The slider controls the latch of the gun. We need to open the latch to shoot out the shell and to load a new one in. But you have to close the latch before you can use it again. I'm not sure if it's called a latch, but my weapon knowledge is null, so we're going to call it that. This reloading mechanic is one of my favorite ideas for this prototype. The player can also jump by tapping a button, but its adjacent slider will also tweak how high you can jump. Now, this level is completely flat at the moment, so this mechanic isn't really utilized, but oh well. Another slider mechanic I implemented for this game is changing the player's stance. When the slider is up, the player stands up. But if you yank it down, the player will crouch. Also, not really a mechanic that does anything except change the visual appearance. But you could imagine having to crawl through tight spaces, or maybe yanking it down whilst in the air to issue a ground pound attack. Having enemies in this game would also be cool, but I'm showing you guys a very early prototype of this game. But uh, why do I feel like I want to see? It's time to tweak it the precision, you can't beat it, yank it up, jump it high, reload the gun or die. I'm really sneaky with the crawl no stance If I wanna disrespect you then you know that I will do the dance Up and down, up and down, up and down In your face yo And then I reload the gun If you're a long time subscriber you can probably already guess what language I use to create this thing Yes, of course, I used the Rust programming language, and I also used a game framework called MacroQuad. But before we look into a little bit of code, I want to show you guys some other cool things you can do with this thing. So, let's go. Some other cool things you can do in this little prototype I made is moving the map around. Now, something I learned is precise movement is very hard if the min and max values are far away. The tiniest step I make on the slider is moving the map around 2 or 3 pixels. I'm sure there are many different ways to implement precise map movements, maybe in this case using buttons would have made more sense. You can also tweak the speed at which the water moves. You can also tweak the strength of the water shader. Now, doing this is actually what sparked the idea of making a game like this. I wanted to get a media controller to see if I would be able to tweak gameplay variables on the fly. Jump height, movement speed, things like that. But the idea of making a game with mechanics that is actually designed from the ground up to work with the slider, like the gun for example, that idea got me really excited, so game variable tweaking, well that's a subject I wanna look more into the future. Now there really isn't that much more to this prototype, but I wanted to get this video out to see what you guys think about it. I'm sure there's a lot of great ideas out there on different game mechanics you can do with this controller, Maybe there are some game mechanics that simply works better for a slider, or maybe even a knob input, rather than binary buttons or joystick controls. So leave a comment if you have an idea and maybe I will pick it up and do something about it. Maybe, maybe, I don't know, we'll see. Now something I like to do on this YouTube channel is talk about what goes into creating things like this. So let's do that right now, let's look on some Rust code. Step 1 Step 1 was to figure out how to process the input events from the MIDI controller. With Rust, crates.io is the place to go. I looked through different libraries, did some research, and the library I decided to try out was called MIDI. And within maybe 40 minutes, we had a way to process the MIDI input. The code was super short, super clean, but a problem with this library though was that the input events happened on another thread. If the main game code runs in another thread, I need a way to get the input data from the input thread to the main thread, and I have never done any multithreading in Rust previously. So, I went to the official free Rust book, and reading through that, somehow I made it work. Then I wrote some code so we could differentiate if a button was pressed, held, or released, and I also added a slider function that only triggers when you surpass a certain value. Now we have inputs, so let's make a game! I recently started learning a game framework called MacroQuad. I used it in my previous video to learn more about graphics programming, and this is where the water shader came from. This library is something I've been working on ever since I made that video, this Tantan Toolbox library. It has state management, animation, water shader, 
transition shader, so I had a really good groundwork to create this little prototype with. Within about an hour I had added animation handling and testing out different ways to use the input to cycle between the animations. And after that I guess I made the game. I mean, it's not really that much of a game. I didn't add physics, it may look like I added it, but uh, no, 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 it's all fake. I feel like we're ready to look on some code, so let's see how this thing works. Let's go. So here is where the magic happens. Basically we have a game state here and what we want to look at right now, I guess, is the update because that's where the action happens. So. Coding this isn't really that different from making any other type of game. Let's just look on how we move the camera around for example. We control the camera's position with two sliders, one for the X value, one for the Y value. So this is how it looks in the code. Let me zoom in a little bit so we can take a look here. Using my input library I wrote, I added a function called getFraction. We pass in the ID of the slider, of slider 6 and 7 is right next to each other and we just get the fractional value of that and we can use that as a position for the camera. So yeah, it's not that much different from writing any other type of game. Here we also can set the water speed and water strength. It's as simple as writing just this. Let's look on a little bit of more interesting things. So the player, for example, the gun. Okay, so the player has a lot of stuff, but what we care about is the gun. Here is a really nice utility function I wrote. Fraction reached limit. If slider with ID 1 if the fractional value surpasses 0.7, this frame, then this will trigger. So it's kind of like a button, but it only happens when you surpass a certain value. If we go over 0.7, we open the latch of the gun. If we go under, then we will close the latch of the gun. It's kind of hard to dig deep into the code quickly. I don't want to drag this out, but... But if you want to check out the source code then you can look on this and then see this code for yourself if you want. Here is all of the code that handles the state of the gun. It, it's not a lot of code. So we have an enum, latch state, is it open, is it closed? And the gun has two variables. Well we have the state of the latch and is the gun loaded? We have a function to see if the player can shoot. We can only shoot if the gun is loaded and if the latch is closed, if the slider is all the way down. Then we have a function to setting the latch state. This is called when the slider trigger happens. If the latch is open, if the slider is up and we set the latch state to be closed, that means we load the gun. This function try consume tells us if we successfully manage to shoot something. We simply check if it's the latch open, then we can't shoot, so we return an error. Consume error latch was open. But if the latch is closed and we are loaded, then we return a success. Latch is closed, the gun is loaded, we can shoot. But if it's not loaded and the latch is closed, we return a error of not loaded. So the gun logic doesn't control the animation. The function that calls this try consume is what handles all of that. When we tap the shoot button on the media controller, which happened to have an ID of 65, uh, we call try consume. Then we can react to what happened. Were we successful in shooting? Yes. Then we will play an animation and play a sound effect. That's all it does. If we have an error, we can trigger an animation. This is when the player looks confused. Both of these kind of do the same thing, I think. You can do different sounds if the latch is open or, or if the gun wasn't loaded. You can find the source code for this project linked down below, but you will not be able to compile it because the art I used for this project is not owned by me. But I still wanted to release the source code so you can see all of the code, but I would not recommend compiling it. I found the player and the environment from itch.io. I will leave a link to them also down below. This has been Tantan, and I will see you guys later. Bye! It's time to tweak it the precision. You can't beat it, jank it up. Jump a high, reload the gun or die. I'm really sneaky with the crawl, no stance. If I wanna disrespect you, then you know that I will do the dance. Up and down, up and down, up and down in your face, yo. And then I reload the gun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah.